Hey everyone, Tim here from QBKing77.com here to do a full review video of the FK09 Jelly Bean Android 4.1.2 ROM on our Sprint Samsung Epic 4G Touch. This is a leaked build. It does have a couple bugs which I will cover in just a second. First of all, I want to go ahead and go into settings, scroll down, go to about device, Android 4.1.2, you'll see build number is FK09. I want to make a note, don't install any previous modems, make sure you stay on the FK09 modem, um, which it'll cause issues if you install a previous modem. But otherwise, let's go ahead and talk about the bugs of this ROM. Most of them have to do with calling and making calls. Uh, some people are affected by them, some people aren't. Sometimes in the middle of a call, you're going to get a bug where the other person on the line can't hear you. I believe they're referring to it as the mute bug. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind that if you make a lot of phone calls, you might want to not consider installing this ROM. As every once in a while, someone might not be able to hear you, you have to hang up, call them back. And also, I believe if they have a contact picture... Um, at the end of the call, when you hit end or if they hit end, I believe your phone application force closes and you might have to reboot your device. So those are the two bugs that I do know about. If anyone wants to fill people in with other bugs, feel free to leave a comment. But those are the two main ones that this ROM has. But otherwise, 3G is going to work. 4G works. Uh, Wi-Fi works great. Uh, but I mean, everything else just seems to be working just fine. Uh, Samsung's actually done a pretty good job with this build. They've implemented a lot of features from the Galaxy S3, which I'm excited about. I actually got it right here to show you guys some comparisons, so I'm excited to get this video going. All right, so here we go. You will notice a new launcher right away. We have uh, a similar launcher from the Galaxy S3. You'll see you have four icons down there and an app drawer. When you go into your app drawer, you have a section for apps and widgets. Apps are continuously scrolling, and then you go over to your widgets, and those are continuously scrolling as well. You do have some new widgets. Uh, application monitors, uh, some weather widgets, very similar widgets that are on the Galaxy S3 or the Note 2. Um, they're, they're, it seems like they're trying to integrate the operating system on all of the devices and just trying to keep things constant, which is a very good idea on Samsung's part. So, um, so very cool widgets. Other application-wise, nothing necessarily out of the ordinary. It is pre-rooted. I've installed the pre-rooted version. There is an option to uh, install an unrooted version. You can check out my how-to video, which I'll link to in the description. Uh, but otherwise, we can go ahead and try out the camera application. I wanted to show you guys that. I'm going to hit cancel. Um, I haven't used the camera, the stock ice cream sandwich camera application on my Epic 4G Touch in a while, but we can go ahead and take a quick picture, and that takes it. Also, you have some effects that you can do. No effect, black and white, negative and uh, sepia. You have some other shooting modes, panorama, beauty, smile shot, and cartoon as well. Uh, so those are some options there, and of course your, your standard settings. Just a, a different look to the camera application. You can switch to video recording, you can switch to the front-facing camera, so we can take a quick picture, we can take another one. So uh, it seems to be running pretty well. We can go ahead and check out our gallery then, loads it on up. Uh, you have other motion things, which I'll get to in a second. It looks like it lets you know the date and time of the picture taken. That picture looks actually really good. You can see the uh, just the kind of indents on my hand, and it looks really good, so that's kind of neat. Otherwise, though, let's go ahead and back out of the camera application. Other things I wanted to show you is we do have Google Now, uh, which I know a lot of people are going to be excited about. This is really great that uh, uh, Samsung's really implementing some good features with this Epic 4G Touch, and keeping things updated is fantastic. Samsung's doing a great job at keeping their devices updated. They're definitely... Uh, go heading in the right direction with updating devices, so I do want to take my hat off to Samsung on that note. What's the weather like in Chicago, Illinois? It's 51 degrees and overcast in Chicago. All right, there you go. 51 degrees overcast in Chicago. Google Now working great. I do have a video talking about some cool things you can ask Google Now. I will link to that in the description of the video so you can ask them some cool things and try this out if you do install this on your device. So Google Now is working just fine. You'll also notice that it does include the Samsung keyboard, which I do not believe was included before. So if I want to do a quick Google search of something, let's say I wanted to say, hey there, for no reason. It does have swipe features, so it is just like swipe, or you can type normally, so you can say, hey there, how are you? takes a little while to get used to. It's hard with this camera in front of me. But anyways, uh, it does have those features as well, which is which is fantastic. You can also pull down and change your input method. You do have swipe still. If those of you that like swipe, you still have that option. There are also a ton of lock screen options. So you'll see it looks like the standard unlock 
option, but you also notice you have shortcuts down at the bottom. So let's say we want to go quickly to my phone application. Whoops, I missed it. <laughs> that was kind of embarrassing. So you press on the icon, swipe away, just like on the Galaxy S3, and it will load it on up. For example, we got it right here. Press on the icon, swipe away, and it brings it up. And what do you know? The dialers look the same. So there you go. So again, even with theming, they're trying to keep things very similar, which is fantastic. So I'm going to set the S3 aside for now. And so those are some lock screen options. We can go straight into settings. I also wanted to make a quick note of the updated look to our notification bar. We have icons right here, Wi-Fi, 4G, Bluetooth, GPS, sync, and screen rotation. Quick settings button. You got the time and the date right there. You can press and hold on an icon and it quickly takes you into that setting. So that quickly took me into 4G settings. And of course, if I want to get into GPS, just press and hold. But now we go back into those settings and we will scroll down and we go to display. There's an LED indicator option where you can have it where it shows an LED when it's charging, a low battery, notifications, and voice recording. So there's other various options where you can have an LED on there. You can also display the battery percentage. So now the battery percentage is going to show up next to it. The theme of this looks just like the Galaxy S3, as I showed you the icons up at the top. Uh, <laughs> wow, that is crazy. Battery percentage, exact same on both of them. Check that out. So I'm going to show you guys that. That's awesome. I don't know why I thought that was so cool, but <laughs> that's kind of cool. All right, so that's enough of those display settings. I wanted to get to the lock screen settings. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there, but we go into lock screen. You can change your screen lock to swipe, face unlock, motion pattern, all the standard ones, but you have lock screen options here where you can have shortcuts on or off, information ticker with news stock or Facebook information on the lock screen. You can uncheck clock, you can have dual clock if you're roaming. I'd like to turn that off because it gets annoying. You can also show weather on your home screen so I can turn that on and help text. I'm going to turn that off. Quick camera access, I can show you guys that. I'm going to uh, turn on quick camera access. It's when you tap and hold the screen and rotate the device, I believe. to. So you tap and hold and rotate and it should open my camera application. There you go, it actually did it. So that's just a little neat feature. I like to have just the quick shortcut on the lock screen anyways for uh, camera access. So I'm gonna turn that off. And now other options, shortcuts. You tap on shortcuts and it brings up uh, a list of options. So let's go ahead and tap on an icon. Let's say I use Gmail more than my email. I don't have Gmail, so, oh yeah, I do. So Gmail gets replaced right away. And you will see when I go straight to my lock screen, it now has a Gmail shortcut as opposed to that email shortcut. So you can change those shortcuts. It's the exact same thing you can do on our S3. So you'll see I go into settings, scroll down and go to lock screen. And on lock screen, I have lock screen options, shortcuts, select shortcuts. It does have more options on the S3, but that, I believe that's because the screen's bigger. So uh, they're gonna inclu include, be able to add more icons on the screen itself. And we also have motion features. I will show you that in settings. You'll see motion, which is fantastic. So you have direct call, which is call the contact currently displayed on the screen, which is when you are in a text messaging thread, you put your hand up to your uh, ear and it makes the call right away, which is great. Double uh, tap to the top to get to the top of the list, tilt to zoom in and out, uh, pan to move the icon, pan to browse images, shake to update, turn over to mute or pause. Uh, so those are some great motion options. You might get a little bit of bugs with these. I believe they're still working out uh, some, some bugs with these motion features. So just kind of keep that in mind. Direct call is the one I use by far the most. So that's just a, another awesome thing. So I can try and demonstrate that. Okay, so to try and demonstrate it, I'm going to just try and move it up. I'm within a text messaging thread within this number, this number is, I believe, uh, a Sprint Tech number. So I can try and move it up. And it didn't work. I'm going to try and do it just by moving it up to my face, and we will see. And it vibrates, and it should be making the call, and it did. Great. So dialing, you get a little progress bar. I haven't noticed that on any device, so that's kind of cool that uh, when it's dialing. It's not going to work. My number isn't on my Epic 4G Touch. But a new in-call screen as well. I'm going to end that call right there. You have option to call message, update existing, or create a contact. So there you go. That motion feature worked great, uh, but you can try it out for yourself if you wanted to install this ROM. Also, when you press and hold on the home button, it's going to bring up your recent running apps list, which seems to be very smooth. You have option to go to Task Manager and uh, Google Now as well. So it brings up your Google search uh, when you press that, or you can clear all. So if you, instead of manually swiping away all of them, you press that garbage can and all of them get cleared. You also notice that visual bug where that, where is that gap down at the bottom is gone. I'm really glad Samsung has gotten rid of that little uh, visual bug with that gap down at the bottom. 
just about everything I did want to show you all the awesome features from Jelly Bean. With this stock launcher, you can't drag and drop applications to create a folder, but it does move the icons like it should in Jelly Bean. But you can drag it up to create folder and name your folder, hit OK, and then you have a folder right there. And then I believe you can drag and drop on top of each other. So that's kind of neat uh, that you have that. And then you go, you got a nice folder. You got some nice animations going on within that folder to open up your applications. But other than that, you have a new browser as well, the Jelly Bean browser. Um, you can open up new tabs, you can open up a new incognito window as well. I am on my Wi-Fi, so it should be fairly quick. I'm going to try loading up qbking77.com and hit go. Let's see if it loads it on up. And it is. Loading up great. And there it is. So there's my site. You can check it out for yourself if you want to. It's got some some cool things on it so be sure to check it out but that's about it uh, with the browser just about everything I did want to show you guys hopefully this review video helps you guys out shows you some new features and gets you excited for an update that should eventually come to the epic 4g touch no idea when it's going to be official of course I'll be doing updated videos on it so again be sure to subscribe to me uh, but it might also deter you guys from thinking about purchasing a galaxy s3 with these added software updates so just kind of keep that in mind but let me know what you think be sure to leave a comment be sure to subscribe as well follow me on facebook twitter and google plus all links will be in the description of the video below and as always thanks for watching be sure to give this video a thumbs up